Okay, so let's go ahead and convert a PDF so we can cut it on my needle cutter on my MPCNC. First thing we're going to do is we're going to open Inkscape. Um, I'm using version, uh, I don't know here, 0 0.91 apparently. Uh, and what we're going to do, the very first thing I like to do, I already have this version of Inkscape configured to do this automatically for me, but I go to Document Properties, set up my units to inches, and set up my document as 30 by 20 because that's the size of foam board that I cut from. Uh, you can there, There's a way you can save this as a default document. I don't remember the details. If I can find a link, I'll put it in the description. But I've already done that here, so as soon as I open Inkscape, I have my 20 by 30. Next, we are going to import the PDF. This is the directory I've been working in on the uh, flight test cu simple cub. And here's the floats, which just came out yesterday. Uh, you can only import one page at a time, which is fine. In this case, I'm going to import this page here, page 4 and 5 are the two that have stuff to cut. But we're going to do page 4 first. Say OK. This might take a moment, depending on your computer. Mine is awful slow, so it takes a moment. Uh, there we go. Now, the thing you'll notice, especially with the flight test plans, is when you first open it, it's all one big object. Uh, you can't do much with that. So what you'll want to do is click anywhere on it to select the entire object, and then right-click on the object and do ungroup. You could enter group and delete things within it. Um, I've just started playing around with that method. I like ungrouping for most things especially this overall. And something about the way uh, the FT plans are made, they're, they're nested groups. So since I just ungrouped once, you'll notice I still have one big group here with all the drawings in it, but all these other items here are now individual. So what I do is one by one I select them and hit delete to delete them. Uh, this here is the entire frame and everything else. Now what I'm going you, you can just delete this, but I kind of like to keep the uh, scale here sometimes just so I can double check things. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup again and click away and then click in to see if no nope, you see this time it's a double group. So we're going to have to ungroup one more time. And now we have things split out better, yeah. So we can delete this line up here, we can delete this line here, and we can do a drag and select because we're selecting more than one item here. And delete, and you see that little logo there has a bunch of pieces that make it up. We're going to have to zoom in. So I'll grab the magnifier, zoom in, grab my uh, selection tool, and, man, still missing pieces of it. Just select them and delete. There we go. Delete this text. Switch back to magnifier and hold down shift to go to zoom out. And grab our selection tool again and find more that we want to delete off of here because we, we don't need to cut any of this. So we'll just delete it. Delete. Delete, delete. Delete, delete, and all this junk over here we don't need. Bye-bye. All right, now, remember we left this grouped, so we can grab this and drag it into position here. The scale bars I'm not actually going to be cutting, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reselect them and then regroup them with the group command. There are keyboard shortcuts um, for group and ungroup. It's, uh, I used to know them. I haven't done this in a few months, so I don't really remember them off the top of my head right now. <laughs> it's, uh, I want to say, yeah, Control G and Shift Control G to group and ungroup, which can be really quick if you're doing something big. 
Now right here, we should be able to save this and open it, but I'm going to be... I, I like to ungroup things before I bring them into Esselcam. So I'm going to select one more time here and ungroup. And that's a big one, so my computer is going to be a little slow. But now we should have... Nope! There was a group within still. So we will, again, ungroup. And wait for my computer. Come on, computer. There we go. Now these are all individual items. And this is what we want. So now this is basically ready to take into our CAM software. So we will save as. And I always save two copies. Um, I save it as the uh, SVG. We'll call this floats one. I already have one here that I did last night, but I'll just replace it. And then I save again. Oops, not save a copy, save as. I save it again as DXF, which should be the preferred format for this kind of thing, but sometimes I have problems with DXFs importing into SLCAM. So we'll save. And uh, pay attention to what your base unit is. It doesn't really matter a whole lot which one you use, as long as you know what it is, so you can open it the same way when you open it in SLCAM. So in this case, we're in millimeters. We'll say OK. It already exists. Replace it. All right. Now we need to open this in SLCAM. I'm still mostly using SLCAM 9. I have 10. Um, I just haven't really set it up <laughs> enough to use it a lot yet. Um, in SLCAM, I've basically got things set up a lot like Ryan suggests for the MPCNC. I have a tool set up for my needle cutter here. I set it as 0.9 on the diameter, um, which is fairly close to the size of the uh, needle that I have on there right now. I don't have my calipers handy to double check, but it, it doesn't have to be too perfect for what we're doing. I have my Z set at 8 millimeters per second because this can dive pretty quick. The tool just plunges right in. It could go faster, but I don't think the machine can go much faster on Z. And I have my feeds... I'm sorry, that Z steps 8 millimeters per step because that's the maximum depth that I want. I'm a little off here today. Uh, my feeds, I have it at 9 millimeters per second for my uh, X and Y move, which isn't fast, but the needle cutter is not a super fast tool. You need to time it so that your uh, number of strokes per minute is related to your feed, and this works reliably. Uh, I have the plunge set to 5 millimeters per second, and really that could be faster. Um, I don't know why I have it that low, in fact, other than it's worked. <laughs> the rest of the tool settings for the needle cutter don't really matter the way we're going to be doing things. Uh, the other thing I like to set up is I like to have my uh, grid, and I set it up at 25.4 millimeters, because I, I work in millimeters in SLCAM. You can see my uh, everything is set to millimeters, because I prefer metric, but... Uh, in the uh, a lot of the plans, things are referenced in inches, so I, I have my grid set up as one inch, which is 25.4 millimeters. So we will come in here and we will open, and we will find the version we made. I will try the SVG first, so here's floats one. We will open it, And it's going to ask for our unit. Now, when we save the SVG, it didn't ask us what the unit was. I believe pixel is the default to use here. Um, and we can look. Now we, we have our drawing here, and we can drag, and we can roughly check here that our inch marks line up with our grid. If we do a move, and we select this, we can drag it over, and we can see that our inch lines up with our grid, so we did import, import it the right size here. Uh, the moves I'm doing are to drag the whole screen around, right mouse click, 
while dragging, and I use my wheel to zoom in and out. And I, I do this all the time while working in here. And then the left button will take whatever you've selected and let you drag it. So I'm going to try and drag this so that I'm referencing off the lower left corner of my page here. I want to see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So this line here is the top of my paper, or my, my sheet. So this is going to fit. And then 30 is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 7, 28, 29, 30. And we are just going to fit on our 20 by 30 with this. So that's perfect. Um, I'll click away from that to unselect the move. And now we're going to start setting up our actual cuts. Uh, one thing that helps here is if you have your uh, uh, PDF open for review so you can see the colors because SLCAM won't show the colors here at least with the flight test plans where you have all these nice different colors that denote the uh, the different um, types of cuts if you look here at the key you can see black lines are cuts dashed lines are scores blue lines are creases and so on so what we're going to do is we're going to come back to Asselcam, and we'll start with these two pieces here because they're nice and easy. I like to use engravings with the needle cutter because that cuts on the line instead of inside or outside of the line. And on these, they're super easy. We just select the needle cutter as our tool, and the outline, the automatic, uh, automatic function here in Asselcam just works. We click on the outline. We give it its depth. I like to use six millimeters for a full depth cut on foam board. So I will select both of these, make them six, and boom. We, we have our first two uh, toolpaths generated right there. Now it's going to get, oh hey, there's the question I'm answering. It's going to get a little more complex from here. Well, we can do these two. They're easy. So engraving, automatic, select it. And since I already did six on the last few, as soon as I click there, it knows it. Six, six. There we go. Now, it's probably not going to auto-detect well on the rest of these. You notice here, if we zoom in, you can see it, it's getting this little hook that we don't really want as a full depth cut. So we're going to have to go into manual mode to do these. And for that, we'll just come here and select manual shape. And now you can see there's a lot more nodes that you can pick and choose from. So we'll zoom in nice and close, and we will pick one that starts. Now, the flight test plans, they're designed for their laser cutters, and so that they have uh, a lot of lines aren't continuous. And that's why the automatic selection doesn't work here. But we'll come in and we'll click on the one we want, zoom out, and just come in and start tracing. And this goes pretty quick. You use your uh, right mouse button to drag around. Now, the neat thing in SLCAM is you can go past more than one point and it'll start doing the automatic version. You see the green line showing up there as it guesses what I'm trying to do. And I like that. So if that's what you want, select as far as you can. And then instead of the left button to select the node, right button will select the green line. If I hit the left button right now, we get that blue line, which we don't really want. So I'll hit backspace to undo that. And we'll follow along our, our path here until the green line shows up. And then we'll right click. And now we have the line that we want on there. So we'll just keep, keep doing that same thing. Now you notice here it's not following again because there's probably a discontinuity in this line somewhere. Yeah, right here. The line jumps a little. So we'll just smooth that out by going to the next point and left clicking on it. And then we'll come in and we'll follow through to here with a right click. Follow to here with a left click. Follow to here with a right click. And let's see how far we can take this. We can bring this one all the way to here. Can we, oh yeah, right to there with a the right click. 
back over here, left click, up to here, over, and then back to our start. We've it turned red to indicate we've completed our line. Uh, we'll set our toolpath depth. Again, this is full cut, so we want to keep it at six. And now we have our cut for this piece. But we're not we're not done because we have to do some score cuts here for the material that's going to get removed. So we'll do these the same way. And this is the other nice thing about using an engraving is it doesn't have to be a uh, complete closed polygon. You can just do a line to engrave. So we'll stay in manual mode and we'll click. We'll just follow the outlines here for the parts that need to be score cut. Right there. We're now good, but see it's still trying to go, so all we do is we hit enter and it completes that as a line. Now for score cuts, I use 2.5 millimeters. That's what works for me on my machine the way it's set up. So I just set that as a 2.5 millimeter cut and we will come in and set up our next score cut. We'll start here. We'll come along here. Click there. Hit enter. And this time it's going to make me re-enter it. 2.5. Let's see here. We'll do this one next. Hit enter to finish it. Depth. I pre-did my 2.5 for me again. Nice. We'll do this inside one. And because these are dashed lines, they're non-continuous, so there's no chance of the automatic tool working in SLCAM because it, it detects each of these as individual lines. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they're doing right there, so I'm going to refer back to this to take a look. And okay, so there's a single bevel in on that in, inner line. So we're going to want to cut this red line only. So come back here, and that would be this right here. So we'll cut along that, bring it over, and complete this cut. This is still just score cut, so 2.5. Now these lines, what are those lines? Let's look at our file here. Those are just uh, a green line. What do they call those? Those are just indicator lines, more or less, reference, optional. So we want to do really, really shallow cuts for those green lines. And for the bevel line, which just, I, I like to have a, a mark there just so I can guide my blade to make a really clean bevel. So we'll come back to SLCAM, and for all these that are going to be guidelines, we'll just click our two endpoints, hit enter, and I'm going to use, a, like, sometimes I use one millimeter. Lately I've been getting gutsier and using 0.75, and that works really nice for me, and just makes a very light mark across. It just barely perforates the top paper. So we'll do that one. And same thing here, where we just want this line marked to guide us on cutting our bevel. 0.75. And now we're going to do these. Same thing here. Since these big straight sections are straight, we can just click along them. Now these get a little trickier. We're going to use a combination of right and left clicks because of the lines being discontinuous. So we'll do a left click to join these two, and then we'll use a right click to follow along that one. Left click, right click, 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 left click, right click. I kind of say the same thing in my head, so you know. If I'm boring you, I'm boring myself. Left click, right click, left click, right click. Oops, I just right clicked that, but it doesn't really matter. Right click, left click, pretty much does the same thing in that case. And this one's a little longer, so we can get away with doing a bit more. Right click, left click, right click. 
And again, you, you don't have to be super perfect here. These are just guidelines. They're, they're in this case, here to guide you on where you're going to glue in a doubler. So if this isn't perfect, it's not going to ruin your plane. There we go. We have our full path on that. Again, this is just a uh, reference mark, so we're just going to do a 0.75 cut. And now we will come in and do this top one. Pretty much any time you see a green line here, I'm doing a right click. Any time you see a blue line, I'm doing a left click. SLCAM tries to help by hiding unnecessary detail, so sometimes you'll have to zoom in to see what you're looking for in some cases. On some of these lines you won't see as many nodes as there actually are until you zoom in. So we'll just keep going through here. Left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click. Left click, right click, left click, right click. And really, if you're just going from one node to a second node, left click is all you need on these real short ones. But I kind of right click out of habit. There we go. Set that as a 0.75. Um, there's a few more cuts here we can make. We have these uh, circles, which are, I'm assuming, where, yeah, where a skewer or a wire goes through. So I pretty much just want those to be a mark. I, I don't want to try and cut the skewer hole or the wire hole. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make those into a mark by using the... Uh, point at the intersection of two lines. No. Wait, engraving. Usually there's a circle on these that I can get it to pick. Oh, there we go. We'll go back to automatic. And that'll give us that full circle. Hopefully they're the right size. Um, I'd rather just make a mark in the center, but that's a little bit more complex. Sometimes, like for uh, CG marks, I'll just do a 0.75 cut along the line. And one option you could do is you could just do a 0.75 cut along this line and this line. And then when it's done, you just poke a needle through the center to mark your center. Um, I'm going to be brave this time, and I'm going to try just doing full depth cuts at 6 millimeter using the circles and hope that uh, Spons was on the ball withdrawing these accurately. I have no reason to believe he wasn't, so oop, I don't want that. We will come back to select. We'll select that toolpath. Hit delete. Engraving automatic circle. Six millimeters. Zoom in on this one. Six millimeters. And then there's no others on the other side of that. And there's no other marks we want to cut on that, so we're good on that one. Uh, next, I'm going to draw this one. It's the same thing. I'm not going to bore you by doing it as a sample here. But once it's done, we are ready to uh, do our next step, which save your project. We'll call this Floats 1. And then save your CNC program. And again, I'll call it Floats 1. Hit save, and it's going to show us the cutting it's going to do. And it should all be good. At that point, you just have to transfer that G code file over to your machine and cut it. Hopefully, this helps. Uh, as you see, this took me about 24 minutes to do while describing what I'm doing and going kind of slow and redoing a few things. If you do it a couple of times, it gets really quick. I can generally do a sheet of plans in 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, you'll see here the cutting for this is estimated to take about 20 minutes. And that's missing this one. It'll probably be a little over 30 minutes once I add in this other float. It generally takes me about 30 minutes per sheet of foam for cuts at the speeds I run. So, 
And hope, hopefully that helped. If you have any other questions, post them down below. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up, please. It encourages me to make more of this kind of stuff. And let me know what you think. Uh, have fun and enjoy your MPCNC. I enjoy mine.